Apple has just unleashed four new iPhones this year, from the 12 to the mini to the pro to the max. But if any or all of those are just too rich for your blood, then Apple also has a few other lower priced models still on their virtual shelves, the 11, 10R, and SE. If you need to upgrade, if you need a new phone, but you don't wanna pay just anything more than you absolutely have to, then one of these lower priced iPhones just might be perfect for you. But which one? What are you getting and what are you giving up? Well, sit back, relax, and hit that subscribe button and bell, and I'm gonna walk you through all of it right now. Sponsored by Brilliant. So Apple has actually held the line this year on iPhone Pro base pricing and even doubled the storage and lowered the higher capacity options. Yeah, a rare 2020 miracle. The iPhone Pro starts at $1,000 for 128 gigabytes, goes to 1100 for 256 gigabytes, and then jumps to 1300 for 512. Mac starts at 1100, goes to 1200, and then all the way up to 1400. The regular iPhone 12 though has gone back up in price. Blame OLED, blame 5G, whatever. It starts now at 830 for 64 gigabytes, goes to 880 for 128 and 980 for 256. And the iPhone 12 mini just slots in right under that, starting at 730 and going up to 780 and 880. And if that's, just, if that's just way too much for you to spend on an iPhone, you can get an iPhone 11 starting at 600 bucks for 64 gigabytes, 650 for 128, or 750 for 256. Or an iPhone 10R starting at 500 for 64 gigabytes, or 550 for 128. But strangely, just no 256 gigabyte option. Or an iPhone SE, which is basically the guts of an iPhone 11 in an iPhone 8 body, starting at 400 and going up to 450 or 550 with, yes, a 256 gigabyte option. So if you know what you wanna spend, you can whittle right down to which model and which storage size you wanna spend on. Just remember, that with the smaller storage capacities, you won't be able to keep as many photos or songs or videos or games or pretty much anything locally on the device. If you stream all your content and store like all your things in all the clouds, maybe you'll be fine with 64 gigabytes. For most people though, I think 128 gigabytes is gonna be the sweet spot, especially since it's just $50 more across the line. And if you can afford it, I really recommend it. If you want stainless steel bands, silver, graphite, 18K gold or Pacific blue colors, you'll need to go with the iPhone 12 Pro. Otherwise, you'll get aluminum bands, but an even wider variety of color choices. And yes, even if you put a case on, you'll still see the color sticking out at you. So really, if you're spending the money, make sure you get a color that you like. Interestingly, the iPhone 12 has one fewer option than the 11 or the 10R, black, white, a slightly more orange product red, a deep blue and a minty green. With the iPhone 11, you lose the blue, but get a light like lavender purple option, as well as a yellow, a slightly different, but still minty green, and a more neutral product red. With the iPhone 10R, you lose the purple, get a sky blue back, a deeper yellow, an orange coral, and a slightly more bluish red. And for the iPhone SE, it's just black, white, and neutral product red all over. But yes, pick the phone first, and then the color you like for that phone. When it comes to display technologies, by skipping the iPhone 12s, you're gonna be skipping the triple density OLED displays that are just across that entire lineup now. Those have high dynamic range and high contrast ratios for deep inky blacks, bright whites, lots of detail in the highlights and the shadows and rich vibrant colors. And there are some problems with OLED, absolutely, like color shifting and smearing and more, but Apple's done a really good job at just mitigating all of that. So they look terrific for watching movies, TV shows, looking at photos. What you get with the iPhone 11, 10R, and SE instead are double density LCD displays. They're still wide gamut, so you still get richer reds and vibrant greens, but you don't get the same high dynamic range, the same high contrast. Now, Apple uses really, really good LCD panels with excellent color calibration. So unless you really care about HDR or are holding them side by side with OLED, you may not even recognize or care about the differences. In terms of size, if you don't get an iPhone 12, you don't get the option for either a Pro Max or a mini size. The 6.7 inch Max can either show you more information or show you the same information, just 
bigger, which is better if your eyes are worse, though it's harder to use one-handed or fit in a pocket. The 5.4 inch mini is the opposite. Much, much easier to use one-handed and fit into pretty much any pocket, but much less and smaller text on the screen. Almost all the other iPhones are 6.1 inches, at least when it comes to the displays. That's the 12, the 11, and the 10R. They're all the same screen sizes. Just the 11 and 10R are slightly bigger, thicker, and heavier because they have to squeeze in those LCD screens. Otherwise, it's just Goldilocks all the way all of them. If you want small but don't want to pay mini prices, there's also the iPhone SE. It's a little bigger physically, but at 4.7 inches, it has an even smaller display. And that's thanks to the classic design with the forehead and chin, rather than the more modern edge to almost edge design of the others. It's still pocketable and one-handable, just with a much, much lower screen to bezel ratio. So if you want the biggest or you want one of the smallest, you have less choice to make. But if you want one of the 6.1 inch sizes, then you can choose based on price and other features. And that includes things like the new ceramic shield on the iPhone 12 models, which is ceramic impregnated glass that combined with the flatter design has Apple rating them as four times harder to break than the previous iPhones, like the iPhone 11. Now they're all still chemically strengthened and ion exchange on the 12s, 11, 10R and SE, which just means if you drop your phones a lot, like I tend to do, you'll wanna go for a 12 and probably in any case, go for a case. But in terms of scratch resistance, scratch protection, they're all the same. So get screen protectors as needed. For particle ingress protection, it's also the same, which basically means dust and dirt. They're IP6, which is pretty much as good as you can get. Water resistance varies a lot though, where the iPhone 12 models just all of them will give you up to six meters for 30 minutes. The 11 will only go to two meters and the 10R and SE only one meter. So you can't swim or anything like that with any of them because they'll fail eventually if you do. But if accidents happen in the bath, at the pool, at the beach, in the rain, you'll have as much protection basically as you pay for. The biggest differences between the iPhones are the cameras. And the biggest differences between the cameras are how many there are and how good they are and how many computational modes they have. They're all 12 megapixels just all the time, at least on the back. And they all have wide angle cameras. The iPhone 12 Max is just a wide aperture, big sensor, low light monster with the other iPhone 12s being just a step behind it. All of the iPhone 12s and the iPhone 11 also have an ultra wide angle camera, which means you can kind of zoom out to capture more of what's in a scene. And the iPhone's 12 Pro have a telephoto with the Max being slightly worse aperture, but also slightly more <laughs> telephoto-y. So you can kind of zoom in to get better close-ups. For computational modes, the iPhone XR has the original Smart HDR, while the iPhone SE and 11 have the second generation, and the iPhone 12's the third gen. The iPhone 11 also has deep fusion for like mid-level light and textures, and night mode for low light, but only on the wide angle. The iPhone 12 has both of those things for just all of the cameras. With the iPhone SE and XR, you get a single lens monocular portrait mode, which uses phase adjust and segmentation masking for pretty decent results. On the 11 and regular 12, you get wide angle portrait mode with optical depth, which is better, but all of those only really work in decent lighting. The iPhone 12 Pros though, with LiDAR scanners, can do just really damn good wide angle and telephoto portrait mode, even in low light and full on night mode. In general, they're all great in normal conditions, especially like, outside during the day. But the new models are just much, much better at low light. So if you really need that full on low light functionality, especially indoors and at night, you're really gonna wanna go with the iPhone 12 Pro, if not the iPhone 12 Pro Max. And yeah, the selfie camera story is very similar. Just 12 megapixels with a slightly wider mode only on the iPhone 12s and 11 and seven megapixels on the 10R and SE. And the SE isn't a true depth camera, so it can't do any of the fancy fun AR stuff. It's just a regular FaceTime camera. For video, for a long time, the iPhones have just had, you know, best in class, just some of the best in the game. And all of these just, all of them can capture up to 4K at up to 60 frames per second and slow-mo at up to 1080p at 240 frames per second. The difference is the iPhone XR and iPhone SE cap out at 4K 30 with extended dynamic range, while the iPhone 11 can go up to 4K 60 EDR, 
which is great, except that the iPhone 12s can now go up to 4K 30 in full on HDR, Dolby Vision high dynamic range, and the iPhone 12 Pro up to 4K 60 in that mode. And of course you get that video in wide angle on all of them, ultra wide on the 12s and 11, and telephoto just on the 12s Pro. So it really comes down to, do you wanna shoot just casual video under normal conditions, or do you wanna pay more to shoot next level video under a wider range of conditions? If you really, really care about the speeds to go with your feeds, both the iPhones 12 and the iPhone 11 go up to Wi-Fi 6, which is 802.11ax. The iPhone 10R and SE cap out at Wi-Fi 5, or 802.11ac. All of them are Bluetooth 5.0, but only the iPhone 12s and 11 have the new U1 Ultra Wideband chip, which, frankly, doesn't do much of anything right now, but will be playing a big role in future features like car keys or virtual keys for your car and Find My, so you can just exactly locate your stuff, like down to the inch, especially if and when those long rumored Apple tags, first and third party actually roll out. The biggest difference here though is cellular. The iPhones 12 all support 5G NR, new radio. Maybe you heard. Of course, whether your carrier in your area supports it or not is a way bigger question. And sure, getting 5G iPhones now will future-proof you if you get 5G soon, but if not, future iPhones will have even better, more efficient 5G radios. So you know my advice. Wait as long as you possibly can to buy, then buy when you absolutely need to, and then just enjoy the hell out of what it is you buy and have zero regrets, because there'll always be something better coming next, which is great because it just means that whatever you buy next will be that something better when you need to buy it. For 4G LTE, the iPhone 12s go up to two gigabits, while the iPhone 11 and SE go up to one gigabit, and the iPhone 10R tops out at LTE Advanced, which is, yeah, slower than one gigabit. Biometrics is another key difference. It's what lets you skip having to enter your passcode or password, making it just much easier and more convenient to unlock, authenticate for purchases, use Apple Pay, just all of that stuff. And almost all of the iPhones now use Face ID. That's Apple's facial geometry scanner. It identifies you based on the structure of everything between your eyes and your nose, which in normal times is just super quick as to be almost transparent, but it does not play nicely with masks, like at all, because masks, when worn properly, cover your nose, which is one of the three points Face ID needs. And all of us are just wearing a lot more masks a lot more often these days. The iPhone SE though still has a home button and that means it still has Touch ID or Apple's fingerprint scanner and that identifies you based on the swirls and ridges of your fingers. It has some problems if you've just washed your hands and the moisture level has changed and it doesn't work at all with gloves but masks are zero problems. And that's probably not what you wanna base your entire decision on but if it's important to you then make sure you consider it. For battery life, the iPhone 12 Max by virtue of its size, is just max, because there's so much battery. It's rated for up to 20 hours of video playback. On the flip side, the iPhone 12 mini, also by virtue of its lack of size, has mini battery life, because there's just less battery. So it's only rated for 15 hours of video playback. The iPhone 12 Pro and iPhone 12 are both around 17 hours, and so is the iPhone 11 and the iPhone XR is just behind it with 16 hours. And yeah, that leaves the iPhone SE in dead last with 13 hours. For the iPhones 12, a lot of that has to do with the OLED and the A14, which gives them a boost. But if you go on 5G, especially millimeter wave in the US, that advantage will just drain away fast, especially on millimeter wave in the US. And they can all charge inductively on Qi standard pads up to 7.5 watts, but the iPhone 12s can also use the new MagSafe magnetic inductive charging system, which will take you just all the way to 15 watts. They also, yes, all still have lightning ports. Sorry, so sorry, no USB-C, and can fast charge up to 50% in 30 minutes with something like Apple's new 20 watt AC adapter. So the only big difference here, MagSafe aside, are bigger and more expensive phones have bigger and longer lasting batteries. And the little less expensive phones have littler and less because physics. So if you want the fastest, most energy efficient processor 
in the industry right now, you're gonna have to go with the iPhone 12 and the brand new A14 Bionic. It's on a five nanometer process with better CPU, GPU, a 16 core neural engine, blazing fast machine learning with four gigabytes of RAM for the regular models, six gigabytes for the Pro. And that's just, that's just enough overhead for all the compute you need now and probably five years or so of iOS updates down the road. So like iOS 19 in 2025. The seven nanometer A13 Bionic in the iPhone 11 and iPhone SE is no slouch either and probably still better than a lot of what's in other phones on the market today. Not quite as much compute as the A14, but it still has four gigabytes of RAM and that means you should still get up to four years of updates to about iOS 18 in 2024. The A12 Bionic in the iPhone XR is a little older now, but still seven nanometer and a similar architecture, just not as much compute. Three gigabytes of RAM and probably only good for updates out to iOS 17 in 2023, which to be fair is the maximum currently offered by the very best of the best Android phones by the likes of Google and Samsung. Now, day to day, you'll only really notice the difference in things like how many photographic modes you get and how fast they resolve, how well big games play and big social media apps stay in memory before they get jettisoned. And yeah, more is always more, but also sometimes enough is enough, especially with just how damn good Apple Silicon is in general these days, especially with how it's using AI and machine learning and computational photography and audio, basically using all the bits and algorithms to do far more than the atoms themselves are capable of. And to learn just much more about that, to get in on the ground floor if you want to, check out Brilliant's new neural network course. Brilliant's a website and app with over 60 interactive courses in math, science, computer science, logic and deduction, physics, quantum mechanics, game theory, cryptocurrency, neural networks, and so much more. It's based on problem solving and active learning. It's about seeing concepts visually and interacting with them and then answering questions that really, really get you to think. And the courses are laid out like a story broken down into pieces so that you can tackle them just a little bit at a time whenever you have time. And there are no tests, no grades. You just pick a course based on what you're interested in and get started. And if you make a mistake, it's no big deal at all. Just check out the explanations and keep going. Head on over to brilliant.org slash Renee Ritchie and sign up for free, for free. Just click on the link in the description or go to brilliant.org slash Renee Ritchie. And the first 200 of you can also level up with 20% off the annual premium subscription. And clicking on that link just really helps out the channel. For more, just a ton more on the iPhone 12, hit the playlist above. I've already got a full hyper detailed review up with every single feature you need to know about and lots more to come. So click the playlist and I'll see you in the next video.